Hello dear children. How are you all? I hope you all are doing well at your home and following the covid guidelines like washing your hands regularly, wearing mask and social distancing. You know, while doing so, we are not only protecting ourselves but are also proving that we are honest and faithful toward our country and its countrymen. We are also courageous to fight with this deadly virus. Today in this video I am going to tell you a story about one such honest, faithful and courageous pet mongoose from our English fairy book lesson number 2 Rikki Tikki and Nag. So let's begin. Rikki Tikki Tavi is a short story in Jungle Book written by Rudyard Kipling who was an English poet, novelist and short story writer. He was born in India and his stories for children reflect his love for Indian culture. In 1907 he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature making him the first English language writer to receive the prize and its youngest recipient to date. Some of his best known works are The Jungle Book, Kim, Puck of Book Hill, Just So Stories for Little Children. Now dear children, before getting into the story, let us now see the characters of the story. Rikki Tikki Tavi, the baby mongoose who was washed away in a flood and taken in by Teddy and his parents, a British family residing in India, a heartbroken Chuchundra, the muskrat, two big cobras, Nag and Nagena. Now let's begin the story. Rikki Tikki went off for his nightly walk round the house and in the dark he ran into Chuchundra, the muskrat, creeping round by the wall. He whimpers and chips all night, trying to make up his mind to run into the middle of the room, but he never gets there. Don't kill me, said Chuchundra. almost weeping rikki tikki don't kill me do you think a snake killer kills muskrats said rikki tikki scornfully those who kill snakes get killed by snakes said chuchundra more sorrowful than ever and how can i be sure that nag won't mistake me for you some dark nights there's not the least danger said rikki tikki nag is in the garden and i know You don't go there. I mustn't tell you anything. Can't you hear Rikki Tikki? Rikki Tikki listened. The house was still, but he thought he would just catch the faintest scratch scratch in the world, a noise as faint as that of a wasp walking on a window pane, of the dry scratch of a snake's scale on brickwork. That's Nag on the gaine. He said to himself and he is crawling into the bathroom sluice. He stole off to Teddy's bathroom but there was nothing there and then to Teddy's mother's bathroom where he heard Nag and Nagaina whispering together outside in the moonlight. When the house is empty of people said Nagaina to her husband he will have to go away. and then the garden will be ours again go in quietly and remember to first bite the big man who killed karet when you are done come out and tell me and we will hunt for rikki tikki together but are you sure that there is anything to be gained by killing the people said nag everything when there were no people in the bungalow did we have any mongoose in the garden so long as the bungalow is empty we are king and queen of the garden and remember that as soon as our eggs in the melon bed hatch as they may be tomorrow our children will need room and quiet i hadn't thought of that said nag i will go but there is no need that we should hunt for rikki tikki afterwards I'll kill the big man and his wife and the child if I can and uh, and come back quietly then the bungalow will be empty and Rikki Tikki will have to go Rikki Tikki tingled with rage the nag's head came through the sluice and his 5 feet of cold body followed it 
angry as he was, Rikki Tikki was frightened when he saw the size of the big cobra. What am I to do? thought Rikki Tikki. If I kill him here, Nagaina will know. But if I fight him out in open, the odds will be in his favor. Nag waved to and fro, and then Rikki Tikki heard him drinking from the water jar. That was used to fill the bath. Nag wrapped himself coil by coil round the bulge at the bottom of the water jar, and Rikki Tikki stayed still as death. After an hour, he began to move inch by inch towards the jar. Nag was asleep, and Rikki Tikki looked at his big back, wondering where would be the best place to get a good hold. If I don't break his back at this jump, said Rikki, he will fight. And if he fights, oh, Rikki, he looked at the thickness of the neck below the hood. But that was too much for him, and a bite near the tail would only make Nag angry. It must be the head, he said at last, the head above the hood, and once I'm there, I mustn't let go. Then he jumped. The head was lying a little clear of the water jar. Ricky big down with all his might and braced his back against the bulge of the red earthenware jar to hold down the head. He gave him just one second's purchase and he made the most of it. Then he was baited to and fro like a rat shaken by a dog, back and forth on the floor, up and down, and round in great circles. His eyes were red. He held on as his body was cut whipped over the floor. He was dizzy, aching, and fell shaken to pieces when something went off like a thunder cap. Just behind him, a hot wind knocked him senseless and red fire singed his fur. The big man had been wakened by the noise and had fired both the barrels of a shotgun into Nag. Rikki Tikki held on with his eyes shut, for now he was quite sure he was dead. But the head did not move, and the big man picked him up and said, is the mongoose again, Alice? The little champ has saved our lives this time.